Welcome to worship for the week of November 29th, the first Sunday of Advent at and with Trinity Lutheran Church in St. Petersburg, Florida. Trinity is a Reconciling in Christ congregation of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We welcome all people to be active members of our congregation and knowing that God has gathered all of us together, we can delight in the diversity of race and ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender, gender expression, and gender identification. Today's service will include the sharing of Holy Communion, which poses some risk for those who are in the sanctuary. Even though the sacrament is being offered, no one is ever obligated to come forward and receive it. I encourage those watching a recording of this service to have identified things in your home that you can use as bread and wine so that you can receive communion as you see it shared in the sanctuary. If you want to make a financial contribution to this congregation, use the QR code that will appear on the screen during the sharing of the piece. It's also in the printed bulletin. You can use our website, trinitylutheransaintpete.org. You can mail a check to us or stop by and deliver it in person. All of our pre-recorded Sunday worship services are available on our website and our YouTube channel. On Sundays at 2 p.m., we gather online and over the telephone for fellowship. Those who can are invited to gather online on Monday at 7 p.m. to talk about the message of this week's worship and how we can apply it to our day-to-day -day lives. Every Wednesday at 6.30, we live stream a service of evening prayer on our Facebook page. On Saturdays at 3 p.m., we have an online book discussion. Contact us for more information about these events and how to participate. This week, we wish a happy birthday to Vicki Skidmore, Faith Dunn, and Martha Head, and a happy anniversary to Faith and Peter Dunn. And now, I invite you to take some time to prepare your heart and your mind to have an encounter with God in this service.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and faithful God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God, awaken us and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free, free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sweet.
stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's readings show how people of faith can respond to difficult situations. Both Psalm 80 and our reading from the prophet Isaiah are prayers offered in time of crisis. The first letter to the Corinthians is a message of guidance and encouragement written to a congregation in crisis. In the Gospel of Mark, the last words of instruction from Jesus to his disciples before his crucifixion are to say that difficult times lie ahead, but they are fully prepared to cope with anything that life throws at them. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard. No one has perceived. No eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourselves, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hands of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are your people. Word of God, Word of life. Thanks be to God. Just. 
A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. The Good News of God's Love According to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth shoots, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. On this, the first Sunday of Advent, the Church moves from having Sunday readings taken from the Gospel of Matthew to a focus on the Gospel of Mark. But you might not notice the change because we start reading Mark's Gospel at the exact place where we had left off from Matthew's. We're in Holy Week, 
a day or two before Jesus is going to be arrested, tried, and crucified, and Jesus is talking to his disciples about the end of the world as they know it. As in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells them to keep awake and to be alert. But instead of doing so with threats of judgment and condemnation, Mark's Gospel offers words of hope and encouragement. Yes, days of suffering and great darkness are coming, but then the Son of Man will return to gather and to protect his faithful followers. Jesus' reference to the Son of Man coming in clouds is a quote from chapter 7 of the Old Testament book of Daniel. After Daniel has a vision in which the historic tyrants of the ancient world are presented as a series of misshapen beasts rising from the seas of chaos, he is comforted by the more welcome sight of one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven in order to set things right in the world. This section of the book of Daniel is a rare example of a type of literature called an apocalypse. Now, while an apocalypse might include scenes of catastrophic destruction, the word apocalypse doesn't mean catastrophic destruction. The word means unveiling or revelation. It refers to pulling back the curtains of reality to show God actively working behind the scenes of world events. Apocalypses are written in times of persecution and great suffering to offer people the hope and the courage to persevere. Faithful people are told that they only need to hold on a little longer before God's powerful rescue will arrive. The book of Daniel was written to encourage faithful Jews to endure pagan persecution in the second century BC. The Gospel of Mark quotes from it in relation to a time of suffering in the first century AD, and in doing so, it offers hope and encouragement to us today. A few decades after the death and resurrection of Jesus, the people of Galilee and Judea rebelled against the oppression of the Roman government. It took the Roman army four years to crush the rebellion, but in the end, as many as a million people had been killed or enslaved, the city of Jerusalem and the temple dedicated to God's glory were completely destroyed, and the survivors had been scattered to every other corner of the empire. Some people think that the Gospel of Mark was written soon after and in direct response to these traumatic events, when both Jews and Jewish Christians feared that they had been abandoned by God. The author didn't think people needed any threats of divine punishment. They needed to be reminded that God is faithful. It's like what we find in some of the Old Testament prophets. In times of prosperity and complacency, the prophets have to warn that destruction could be right around the corner. In times of suffering and trauma, prophets have to assure people that God is still with them, laying plans for a bright future. And when the reality seems a little less bright than people had hoped, we get words like today's reading from Isaiah, a strange mixture of threat and encouragement. What begins as a demand that God's enemies would be crushed by divine power ends with the realization that suffering people need to be shaped by the loving hands 
of a divine artist. You are our potter. We are the work of your hands. You are our Father. Saints and sinners alike, we are all your people, and we need your help. This isn't the prayer of an individual. It's the prayer of a wounded community. 1 Corinthians is a letter from the Apostle Paul to a wounded community of faith. Before it is done, the letter will offer harsh rebukes about factions and abuses of power, but it begins in a much gentler tone, with a reminder that the community was gathered and established not by Paul, but by God, with a prayer that God's peace would be bestowed on this troubled congregation and with an acknowledgement that it has been blessed with everything that it needs to bring the light of God's love to a dark and troubled world. The church in Corinth is not lacking in any spiritual gift as they wait for the apocalypse, the unveiling, the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great and glorious day toward which God has been guiding all of human history. Like the Corinthians, we are a community of faith gathered by the Son of Man and established by God for God's purposes in this city. We have a long history of joyful and faithful service, but we too have been wounded by events and circumstances. 2020 has been such a traumatic year that we too might be in need of an apocalypse, a pulling back of the curtain to remind us that God is faithful and God is in control. For months, it has felt like we were being fed with the bread of tears and given bowls of tears to drink. The truth we need to recognize is that we continue to be nourished and strengthened by the bread of life and the cup of salvation offered to us in the body and blood of Christ. Because God is faithful, God's hands have never stopped molding and shaping us into what God needs us to be today and in the future. Human history is a roller coaster that lifts us to heights of glory and plummets us to the depths of despair. But God's love and faithfulness are the track to which our cars are firmly fixed as we negotiate the twists and turns of life. And what looks like light glimmering at the end of a particularly long and dark tunnel is the divine light that has always been shining upon us. In the warmth of that light, the fig tree is starting to sprout leaves. The long and dark winter of 2020 is almost over and the summer is near. And as we wait for the revealing of God's hopes and dreams for us in the coming year, we are not lacking in any spiritual gift that we might need. We just need to keep awake and to keep alert for God's presence because God has brought us to this moment of possibility and God is going to guide us forward.
not in splendor bright, not as a monarch, but the child of Mary, blessed Mother mild. At your great name, O Jesus, God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the church. Open our hearts to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We pray for creation. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. We, pr we pray for the people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We pray for those who live with depression, anxiety, pain, addiction, and for the sick especially those whose names we hold in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for the lives and witness, for, witness of faithful servants whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Let's find ways to share a sign of that peace with the people who need to see it. Stop. 
up I take, let this be my solemn vow, to take each moment and live each moment in a peace eternally, that the and let it begin with me. Please join me in the offering prayer. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer that through these gifts, the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Emmanuel, God with us, amen. In the fullness of time, God the Father, through the work of the Holy Spirit, sent his son Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, O God, we remember your word dwelling among us. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Send your Holy Spirit to bless this meal so that your word may take flesh in us. All praise and glory are yours, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here at this table. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. May the creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. May the long expected savior fill you with love. May the unexpected spirit guide your journey now and forever, amen. Rejoice, believers, and let your lights appear. The evening is advancing, and a dark night is near. The bridegroom is arising, and a sword is drawing by. Up, pray, and watch, and pray. Midnight comes the cry. The watchers on the mountain proclaim the bright Go forth as he approaches with the lawyer's clear. The Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.